Ah, uh, the elusive 1v3. The sign that you've made it and you've become so cracked at the game that you're now sweat incarnate. Or at least that's how it feels when we managed to pull it off once every thousand games or by sheer luck. In Apex, wiping an entire squad by yourself or donning multiple enemies in a row can be seen as the ultimate pro game remove and one that we frequently watch top players pull off as they delete entire lobbies. In this video, I'm going to give you 8 fundamental tips to give you your best shot at fighting multiple enemies and how to fight in general. What's up my dudes, Suit Monkey here, back again with the long awaited episode 6 of the Level Up series. Let's not waste any more time, it's time to suit up and let's get into it. Now, when fighting multiple opponents, there's typically a few scenarios we encounter. The first one is where no one knows where you are and you can kill each opponent with the element of surprise. The second one is where two or more enemies are focusing you, aka the hardest situation. And the third is where you're being chased by a single enemy but his teammates aren't close enough to be a threat, or basically a 1v1. This one is the situation you want to get good at forcing in order to consistently win fights against entire squads. Remember, since your gun can only shoot one direction at a time, the moment you get caught in crossfire, the enemy squad can effectively double or triple their damage output and pretty much kill you in an instant. Now, there are 8 main aspects of fighting in Apex that you're going to need if you want to stand any chance of survival when engaging squads. This goes both for when you're solo or with a team. Now, while fighting, there's usually a lot happening in the environment that's not always obvious to the player. And I want to start with the major reason we most often die in our attempts to kill multiple enemies in the first place. Many of us have downed someone only to get shot in the back, get focus fired, or worse yet, get third partied. This is almost always due to a lack of information, or more so, inefficient or lazy information processing. Information is the first major aspect of every fight, and refers to all visual, auditory, and situational cues that together allow you to subconsciously make decisions on the flight. To understand and recognize information, however, is going to require some degree of game sense, which in its simplest definition is the sum of knowledge and experience you've gained by playing the game. Game sense ultimately determines how you act based on the information you have. How well you're able to act, however, is a different story, and that is determined by your mechanical skill. These three components, information processing, game sense, and mechanical skill, overall determine how good you are at the game. Now, since the information and decision making pretty much permeate every aspect of gameplay, to fully explain, I'll need to break it up among the other points. But before I move on, something I need to mention is that even if you have all the information in the world, this alone doesn't win fights. Everyone, pro or not, is going to get surprised, blindsided, or stuck in difficult situations they can't escape. But the goal here is to stack the odds in your favor as much as possible. First off, whenever taking fights or approaching a squad, a good rule of thumb is keeping a five second timer in your head that ticks down to the point where you're forced to reevaluate your situation and either continue course or take a different action. It can be shorter than 5 seconds, but the reason for it is to build a habit of constantly being aware of your environment and enforcing situational awareness. Gun sounds, rising sounds, healing sounds, footsteps, etc. provide you with instant information, allowing you to determine how close enemy teammates are, how vulnerable they are, what guns they're using, and if it's a good idea to push or retreat. Also, a quick tip when fighting is that if a new team pulls up, it's always in your best interest to immediately pull out and reset. Getting pinched between two teams is the absolute worst position you can be in in Apex, and a large majority of deaths usually result from fights that last way too long which leave us surrounded because we missed or ignored important details. Which is why keeping a timer in your head and constantly reassessing the information around you will often save you from a lot of sticky situations. Long story short, more info means more options, and if you haven't done it already, make sure your sound effect volume is turned up. This brings us to the second and most important aspect when fighting multiple enemies, movement and repositioning. Without a doubt, Apex rewards movement and positioning more so than any other aspect of gameplay. And usually, the reason for getting aped is lack of movement and bad positioning. In general, you should only stay in one position as long as necessary until you can either push or retreat. This is especially important when taking fire, because the moment an enemy knows where you are, they're going to ping you, notify their teammates, and then focus your position. Note that this doesn't apply if the enemies don't know where you are, in which case you can play the area so long as it remains advantageous. Always remember, your enemies are thinking just like you are, hence, if you know exactly where someone is, you're most likely going to focus that area with your team. This is why, when getting pushed, shifting your position instead of defending one area forever effectively gives your enemies less information to work with. Before I move on, everyone says you should prioritize taking height, and this is true, but it's never really explained why it's important. Having the high ground not only allows you to see farther and gather more information than your enemies, it also places you in a position where you can see directly over their cover while also angling you in such a way to do maximum damage by shooting downward on their heads and upper bodies. It also provides natural cover in the form of ledges. Keep in mind however, just because you have height doesn't mean you're safe, and instead you might actually be even more exposed than before. So practice being aware of the angles you're exposing versus the ones you're cutting off and be a bit more careful where you take height. This is where I want to stress the importance of capitalizing on third parties, which are especially important 
if you're alone. Now, enemies don't immediately know that you're a solo, and if you can operate just outside their range of perception while they're busy fighting other squads, you can effectively pick off multiple enemies or damage large groups with your abilities. If teams aren't focusing you, do your best to maximize your angles and deal free damage, meaning find a spot where you're hard to hit, you're up on height, or at a distance where you can reposition or retreat if you start getting pushed. In which case, the best technique to combat this if you're unable to simply kill your enemies is what I like to call an offensive retreat. Essentially, you need to get good at managing your distance while doing bursts of damage as often as you can until a window becomes available to capitalize on and knock someone. Ultimately, you poke, reposition, heal if you need to, and repeat, all the while waiting for the enemy team to make a mistake. The goal is separating the enemy squad so they become weaker as a result. And most times, especially in pubs, you can bet that one member of the enemy squad is going to separate, over push, or rush you by themselves. And it should come as no surprise that these are usually all team players. You know who you are. And this is where you want to really punish your opponent. You want to create a scenario where you have the ability to 1v1 or at least do damage without interruption, even if it's only for a second, because you can't fight more than one person at the same time. Some legends, namely Wraith, Octane, and Bangalore, are much more adept at fighting multiple opponents due to their abilities, which give them an edge in repositioning and throwing off their opponents. Solo or not, when multiple enemies are rushing you, make a habit of always closing doors behind you to slow enemies down, thermiting doors to deny enemies access to an area. If you're really damaged, running a little bit farther away than you think you need to in order to heal, staying close to objects so you can break line of sight as quickly as possible, blocking doors with your body to heal if you're in a pinch, poking enemies while they're in the open or running at you, and most importantly, staying relaxed, calm, and focused. If you can, prioritize killing characters early on that may have fights harder to win. Mainly Lifeline will single-handedly make you feel like you're fighting an uphill battle. These habits will greatly increase your odds of survival in any situation where you find yourself unnumbered. However, you'll need to combine this with another aspect of gameplay to complete the equation, and that is cover. In Apex, basically anything can be used as cover, from the slope of a hill, to a rock, a building, or even a light post. Now, the golden rule to always follow in fights is to always play from or have cover nearby. The goal of cover is to reduce the amount of damage you take during exchanges, while giving you enough space to heal, reload, and reevaluate your situation. The more lines of sight you can cut off from your enemy, the lower your chances are of being blindsided. Cover is equally as important as movement and gun skill, and peeking specifically is possibly one of the most crucial and underestimated skills in the game. In general, when using cover, it should occupy roughly 30 to 50% of your screen. This is usually a good balance, and the higher you can get this percentage, the quicker you can duck behind cover and the harder it is to get hit, meaning you ultimately spend less time healing, shoot more and apply more pressure, which is exactly what you need to do when facing down multiple opponents. The less damage you can take and the more damage you can deal, the higher the chances your enemy will disengage and try to heal, at which point they're vulnerable which gives you more freedom to push and close the gap. Pretty much, you want to lessen as many straight up 50-50 gunfights as you can unless you don't have a choice. The habit of using cover is crucial to build because at mid to higher levels, peeking wide or being caught in the open is heavily punished and it's a simple mistake that far too many players pay for. Now, if you're on height, head glitching is going to be the most effective technique to make yourself more difficult to hit while still being able to see your opponent's entire body. To do this, with your crosshair on the enemy, move backward to bring your crosshair as close to the cover's edge as possible. Add strafing, and from the enemy's perspective, you're now a much smaller and difficult target to hit. Peeking also doubles as a good way to gather information. As mentioned before, the more information you have, the better decisions you can make. Hence, while healing behind cover, build a habit of periodically peeking as often as possible to ascertain what your opponents are doing. This can be done by jumping at random intervals or even peeking from a different angle. This is even more important when outnumbered because your enemies pretty much hear the same sound effect you hear when armor is broken meaning they know exactly when you're vulnerable, which is why you should peek as often as you can and listen for audio cues, especially when you're unable to fire. This will let you know if you could afford to heal fully or if you need to reposition to avoid getting rushed. Ultimately, cover is an integral part of movement and is pretty much a second layer of armor. So remember, whenever you're pushing an enemy or running away, always move from cover to cover so you always have a way to protect yourself. Try your best to limit any angles of exposure you can. This will maximize your effectiveness when pushing, defending, or escaping, as well as maximize your chances of winning a 1v3 and gunfights against multiple players in general. Now, at this point in the video, I gotta take a second to thank you all for supporting the channel. We finally broke past 30k subscribers, which is totally insane, and I have no one else to thank but you guys. So for everyone that's new, once again, what's up my dudes, and welcome to the channel. I've got much more content planned, as well as a new series I'm working on after this video. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure you subscribe and leave a like to feed the algorithm and support the channel. Otherwise, your neighbors might start wondering why there's a well-dressed monkey outside your house. 
Now, getting back to the video, the next topic I'm going to discuss is pretty much a meta within its own right. I'm not referring to meta like overpowered legend abilities or weapons. Rather, I'm talking about the meta game of health, ammo, and inventory management. And I'm going to start with one of the most useful mid fight skills you're going to need your ability to armor swap. And not just armor swap, but doing it effectively. Swapping armor from dead bodies or crates is an instant way to continue fighting with little to no downtime. However, in order for it to be effective, you will have to do two things. First, make sure in your gameplay settings that this setting is turned off. It's turned on by default and it's more often than not going to get you killed by closing the window every time you get hit. Second, you need to make the action of armor swapping a reflexive habit. To do this, the moment you begin opening a death box, preemptively look and begin pulling your crosshair toward the mid bottom left side of your screen. By the time the menu opens, your cursor will already be in place and all you have to do is click and close. Make this a habit and you'll be able to armor swap much easier and faster, even when you're under serious fire mid fight. Which brings me to a point I want to make about your priorities, specifically thirsting down the opponents. Remember that if a downed enemy can see you, chances are he's spamming your location to the rest of his squad so they can find you. During a 1v3 or any multi party fight, thirst down the opponents to cut them off, but only if you can do it fast enough or you need resources like an armor swap or ammo. Don't make the mistake of getting killed while trying to thirst. Far too many times I've seen players seemingly forget they're in the middle of a fight and focus way too long on killing a downed opponent only to get killed by the remaining teammates. This goes back to game sense and using all the information around you to make good decisions. Try your best to focus on the fight itself and only getting what you need rather than just a kill. Something else that's crucial is frequently checking your inventory. During a fight, knowing how many items, ammo and heals you have off the bat lets you quickly decide what loot to prioritize, whether it be ammo, shields or health, if you need to change guns entirely because you're running low on that ammo type, if you could afford to run away and heal or you gotta thirst someone for their armor because you're in too deep and all the heals, and if to avoid fighting altogether because you're lacking resources. It also prevents a painful trap that a lot of players fall into when it comes to looting. Looting junk you don't need. Ultimately, you want to spend as little time looting and managing inventory as possible. Not only does this mean you need to loot faster, it also means culling your inventory every chance you get. Doing this will keep your inventory lean and avoid one of the worst scenarios to be in during a fight. Nothing's worse than having to stop and manually remove an item in your bag to make space for another one you need in a hurry. And as far as the ideal inventory layout goes, it's highly personal but the common conventions most Apex players agree on are always having at least 1-2 to two stats of cells and syringes, a minimum of 2 bats and 2 meds, at least 1 phoenix kit, at least 1 grenade and at least 2 stats of ammo for each type of gun you're running. Weapons like the wingman and repeater can usually get by on 1 stat which allows you to free up space and minimize swapping. Overall, the less time you spend managing your health, ammo and inventory during a 1v3, the more active and engaged you can be. And this brings us to the final aspect of fighting on 1v3s. As important as movement, cover and inventory management is to winning fights, the final skill that caps it all off is none other than aim. There's really no getting around it, good aim vastly increases your success rate during fights and most often allows you to turn most bad situations around in your favor. Because there's not much an enemy can do when they've been beamed to death in an instant or get forced to retreat after taking massive damage. At its core, aim is a purely mechanical skill involving your brain and nervous system that can be practiced directly or developed naturally over thousands of hours of gameplay. It'll take time either way, but the key here is repetition and consistency. When the opportunity comes to punish your opponent, you're going to need the ability to beam them and hit your shots. Now, since I already discussed most of what you need to be doing for better aim in episode 3, which thanks to you guys, is currently sitting at more than half a million views as one of the channel's best received videos to date. I won't repeat the same stuff here, but what I will go over is how to deal with inconsistent aim and how to make it as reliable as possible in these situations. Now, apart from always staying relaxed, which is something I elaborate on in the aim guide, a good practice for consistent aim is to simply accept that your first few games are usually going to be shaky until you find your groove. Warming up, using a name routine, or doing drills in the firing range before playing the game itself can greatly mitigate this inconsistency. Personally, depending on the day, I spend about 15 to 20 minutes warming up with a personal Kovacs routine, usually followed by 10 minutes in the range before I play. If I already feel confident in my aim, I'll skip the warm up and just hop straight in. You can also just play the game until you've warmed up and feel confident. In the description, I'll leave the routines I use so you can check them out if you're interested. Now, even though it might seem like pro players always have perfect aim, they don't, but it's also not that simple. Inconsistent aim is something that happens to virtually every player, pro or not. If you can imagine your aim performance as a set range on a ruler, the more experienced the higher skilled you become, the smaller the range gets and the higher the average shifts, basically moving you toward the higher skill ceiling. At a certain level, even on bad days, your performance will still be much better than most players on their best days. This is just natural progression. 
Now, the main way to keep your aim as consistent and reliable as possible, apart from warming up before every session, is understanding you need to make everything else around you as consistent as possible. Your monitor distance, posture, mouse grip, diet and exercise all contribute. Basically, for human beings, environmental consistency determines the rate of motor adaptation. Each time you grip your mouse in a different way, sit in a random position, adjust your monitor, or rest your arm on your desk differently from last time, you're effectively changing your environment, which can actually affect how good your aim feels from day to day. When combined, both repetition and environmental consistency lead to an increase in motor adaptations, and this was shown in an article from 2014 which I'll link below if you're interested in reading the full paper. And speaking about adaptations, the next most critical aspect of keeping your aim consistent is sleep. And contrary to what you've heard, 6 hours or less is simply not enough for you to be at your best, both learning and performance wise. Sleep is crucial for both motor learning and performance gains when mastering a skill. And if you're serious about progressing your aim, it's something in your best interest that needs more attention. I'll link another article below which goes over how sleep affects motor learning. Because as gamers, more often than not, we're usually nocturnal, with irregular sleep patterns and inconsistent hours. The reason your aim might be wildly inconsistent from session to session might simply be down to a lack of consistent daily sleep. Now with all that said about aim, a critical mistake you need to avoid is thinking that good aim alone is all you need. This is the mindset that makes players disregard all common sense and rushing blindly thinking they can just hop in and fry everyone with their godlike aim. Behind the aim of great players like ASU and other pros is excellent decision making, constant information processing, a large amount of game sense built through experience, and mastery of all the other aspects I've mentioned. Your aim works better when you don't have to think about it. So while good aim is necessary, put your focus in figuring out how to win an encounter and let your brain unconsciously handle all the aim mechanics you've been practicing for so long. Finally, this brings me to the truth about fighting in Apex and why it's something that most players struggle with. As mentioned before, game sense refers to your ability to combine information with game knowledge to ultimately make good decisions. Bad habits you grow out of, like resing a teammate in the open, trying to reload mid-fight instead of switching to your secondary, or always breaking away from your team, is a direct result of experiencing a bad outcomes caused by these actions. Somewhere along the line, a mental aversion was formed in your head that stops you from making those same mistakes ever again. What I'm saying and the ultimate truth is the only way to get good at 1v3s and fighting in general is to consistently take fights as often as you possibly can and actively learn as much as you can from them. You won't learn how to fight multiple opponents without being in situations where you're forced to. You need to focus on building your experience by getting into tough situations and constantly challenging yourself. Record and analyze your own gameplay, pick out the mistakes you could have avoided and think about ways you could have handled situations better. In summary, build a habit of reassessing the information around you to increase your situational awareness and make better decisions, move and reposition often while limiting your angles of exposure, especially when taking height, capitalize on third parties to kill enemies when distracted, or use them as diversions to escape being pinched, when being chased to get good at running away, break a line of sight and dealing damage to even the odds, or basically an offensive retreat, abuse cover by head glitching, peeking and always making sure cover is nearby, master armor swapping, thirst only if you have time and focus on winning the fight itself, proactively manage your health and amount in inventory by healing as often as you can, dropping junk you don't need from your inventory, and changing weapons you can no longer run, and finally, make your environment and habits as consistent as you can and warm up to make your aim as reliable as possible while also continuing to challenge yourself and grow as a player. And that pretty much covers it for episode 6 of the Level Up series. This episode took a while to produce but I hope you all enjoyed it in the end. And by the way, the Monkeyland Discord community has grown a bunch in the last 3 months and I'm super grateful to all of you for supporting the channel. Check the link in the description if you want to join, I'm almost always online, everyone is friendly and around the time of this video's release, we're currently in Monkey Summer, where we have movies, events, competitions, prizes and more, so check it out if you're interested. Have a good one, take care my dudes, I suit Monkey out. Heat shield. Bruh. Oh shit, this is room four. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. That's a good start. Sheesh.